self-driving cars really are the tech of the future, which paints a world where convenience and comfort are put first to eliminate the stress of daily commutes, allow efficiency to dictate the road, and even save countless lives that would have otherwise been lost in deadly crashes. But autonomous vehicles also pose many questions about our future. How self-driving cars will shape society? What will our cities look like if we don't have to spend infrastructure on parking our cars? And will we even own our own cars? Or will a complex network of self-driving cars pick us up whenever and wherever we need them? Today, with the help of our special guest, Cody from Alternate History Hub, we'll be uncovering the secret world of self-driving cars and the innovation happening right now to make a driverless future our reality on this first ever episode of The Future of Tech. We'll start off the episode with a bold prediction by Business Insider, which inferred that 10 million self-driving cars would be on the road by 2020. Now, this may seem like a far-fetched claim, but it is actually a lot more possible than you may think. Because, in fact, there are already cars with self-driving technology on the road today, and the tech is only getting better and better. Take, for instance, the new Tesla Model S, a car which can drive itself using complex algorithms and technology that is designed to control the car on the highway without much driver interaction. Proving that not only does this technology exist today, but it's also on the free market available to the public. With over 22,000 Model S cars sold in the first half of 2016, that makes for a decently sized consumer base driving semi-autonomous vehicles. Now Tesla is doing amazing things, but just self-driving on the highways isn't full automation. That's where Google comes into play. In contrast to Tesla, Google's own self-driving car project requires no driver interaction on traditional streets with built-in Google software connected to the cloud that gets better at driving every single time it drives. And with over 1.5 million miles driven to date, the future may not be so far off after all. So now that we know a bit about the current status of self-driving cars, we want to take a look at what the future may have in store. But first, it's important to understand the history behind automobiles themselves. That's why I've invited a friend of mine Cody from Alternate History Hub to tell you about the history of cars. Also, be sure to check out his video as well. Thanks, Elric. Steam power inspired many creative thinkers during the 18th and 19th centuries to innovate new vehicles that operated without the use of a horse. Throughout the 19th century, these horseless buggies were improved in tiny steps, better brakes, better steering, you get the point. Up to this time, steam, and not gasoline, was the most popular form of fueling cars, if we can call them that. The first true car wouldn't be created until 1873. At this point, numerous inventors had claimed patents for a four-wheeled vehicle. By the 1880s, steam wasn't the only power source. Petrol, electric, and even hydrogen batteries were used in the first cars. Keep in mind, cars at this time were simply used by the rich or their inventors. The common man was still walking, taking the train, or riding a horse to get anywhere. These cars usually went around five miles an hour. By this time, interest in new forms of transportation was picking up as cities became denser, horses were more unreasonable to keep around, and the world became more connected. Automobile history is commonly split into eras. The first was the veteran era. These were the first type of cars. They resembled buggies more than modern vehicles and went the speed of them too. Windshields were non-existent. They weren't going to transform anything, but they were nice to ride on. This similar style continued in the brass era. The Ford Model T was created in this time, which in the US brought the car to the common man. The vintage era began at the end of the war and lasted till the Great Depression. The popularity of the car exploded. The front engine design became a standard. Speed was increased so much windshields needed to be created, 
and by 1930, most cars were closed in the cabin. And then the Depression hit. By the 30s, automobiles became what we see as the car. Much of the aspects from this era haven't changed too much in design. Closed solid body, four wheels, front engine. Notable cars of this era are the Ford V8 and the Volkswagen Beetle. The Beetle was designed to drive on Hitler's newly constructed Autobahn. With the post-war era, American companies saw a boom in production of vehicles. Designs for cars became more artful and stylish. By the 60s, Japan began to export cars to a new base in the U.S., and it would become the largest car exporter by the 90s. With a new modern era starting in the 80s, cars have become dominated by electronics. Safety features, economic standards, and environmental regulations are now prominent throughout this era. Now that we've learned about the history of cars, we can start to put the pieces together for the next step in transportation, the self-driving car. Now, contrary to popular belief, cars don't fall into just two categories of driver interaction. There are actually five different levels according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, with level zero representing the car you probably drive today, with no autonomous features, to level four, where the vehicle is fully autonomous and no driver interaction is expected at all. In between these levels lies varying forms of semi-automated vehicles, like the Tesla Model S, that can take over in certain conditions, but are not fully autonomous. So now that we know what defines a self-driving car, it's best to look at the vast list of advantages self-driving cars can have on society. But also understand that there are potential obstacles that self-driving cars can face, and that when technology is so new, it's still important to remain both open, yet still cautious. Some of the major advantages of a self-driving car future fall into three main categories, safety, convenience, and efficiency. In terms of safety, a future filled with self-driving cars would be a lot less prone to dangerous traffic collisions, which usually result from human error, whether by accident or as a result of being under the influence. Proponents of self-driving cars argue that self-driving systems would vastly eliminate the majority of traffic collisions, and thus save thousands of lives. Just two years ago, in 2014, 32,675 people tragically died in motor vehicle crashes. With an automated system, the risk of death or injury in a motor vehicle could dramatically decrease, because self-driving cars in general won't get distracted, don't drive impaired, have better reaction times than humans do, and even in the future could communicate with other cars on the road through a network that plans out all routes, virtually eliminating any accident at all. This all seems very promising for the safety argument of self-driving cars. However, those against an autonomous future argue a few valid points that should definitely be considered. Some claim that self-driving cars may not get it right all of the time, which is almost certain to be true, since even with technology, accidents happen and machines malfunction. So many say they would rather control their own fate rather than have a machine that could fail. A valid argument which they usually follow up with an additional philosophical question. Is it better to be in control with greater risk or surrender control for a lesser risk? Now, despite the debate on individual self-driving cars, it is almost certain that as a whole, self-driving cars would reduce the number of accidents and deaths across the board, creating a much safer self-driving future. Another strong argument for self-driving cars is on the basis of efficiency, both time efficiency and economic efficiency. According to a study conducted by the NHTSA, Car accidents cost the United States economy a staggering $242 billion a year. That's $800 for every single person living in the United States right now. Now this is a lot of money, and that is lost due to the inefficiency of human drivers and the inevitable human error that results in accidents which cause damage and therefore cost money. But even on top of the economic impact of self-driving cars, there would also be a lot more efficiency for time. 
The first instance is that self-driving cars could seamlessly communicate with other self-driving cars to eliminate unnecessary traffic. On top of this, the fact that the car can drive itself gives you, as the driver turned passenger, a chance to regain time that would otherwise be lost to a boring commute. Which brings us to convenience. After safety and efficiency is discussed, everyone quickly jumps to the fun part of the future, convenience. Whether you choose to spend your newfound time catching up on news and enjoying a cup of coffee in the morning, watching your favorite YouTube show, or even getting some extra sleep before work, the convenience factor of self-driving cars would help to eliminate the stress that's commonly referred to as the stress that doesn't pay. A recent report featured on Psychology Today shows the average American spends 25.4 minutes a day commuting. Just look at all of these long commute times in this chart, which shows the commuting time based on location. Self-driving cars allows commuters to focus less on the roads and gain more freedom to choose their own activity, whether it be reading the news, watching entertainment, or even catching up on some much needed sleep. Now I know I said that there were three main advantages to self-driving cars earlier, and that's true, on the surface. But now we're going to explore deeper into what the future might hold for self-driving cars and why a self-driving future could shape cities, change the way we experience and look at transportation, and even help to save the environment. But first, a quick word from this episode's sponsor. This episode of Future of Tech is brought to you by our videos on the best rewards apps for your iPhone or Android device. Whether you're looking for an iTunes or Google Play gift card, extra gems in Clash Royale, Pokemon Go coins, or even just simple PayPal cash, you can earn all these rewards very quickly and easily using the apps on our list of the best apps to earn rewards on your iPhone or Android phone. Click the card link, annotation link, or link in the description to watch either the video on our best rewards apps for the iPhone, or if you're on Android, check out our new Android edition, so you can start earning rewards today. Enjoy. So now we're going to dig a little deeper and try to predict where a self-driving car future could take us. Now this is where we get to a bit of conjecture, because we obviously cannot know exactly what the future may hold. But we hope to use our research and the information we've shown you in this video today to give you a glimpse at what we might see in the future of self-driving cars. Also, be sure to let us know what you think the future holds for self-driving cars in the comments below for a chance to be featured on our next episode and receive a $10 iTunes or Google Play gift card. Self-driving cars could shape cities. Yes, that's right not just drive in cities, but they could, in the not too distant future, dramatically change our city's infrastructure and the way we treat transportation. One of the biggest problems our cities face is the issue of parking. Just think about it. How much of our city's infrastructure is dedicated to just storing empty cars? Cars that just sit there all day, taking up space in our already crowded city streets, driveways, and packed parking garages. Even leading to a parking spot in a garage on Beacon Hill in Boston being sold for a jaw-dropping $650,000. There's clearly a problem here. Self-driving cars could solve this issue of parking taking up too much of our city's infrastructure because of the fact that self-driving cars can just drop you off. That's right, they can just drop you off. You don't need to walk from wherever your car ends up parking. You can just be dropped off at your destination and picked up whenever you need your car. This could allow for large parking facilities at strategic parts of the city or even outside of the city that could store your cars when you don't need them. This would dramatically open up our cities for improvements and much more space. We can even take this a step further. In the later future, no one will even own a car. At least, not in the sense we see it. And we're already seeing this happen with ride-sharing apps such as Uber and Lyft, 
which, by the way, are both rumored to be heavily investing in self-driving technology. You would instead get dropped off and picked up by different cars. They would know your morning schedule, take you to work, and will be available for you whenever you need them, just like an Uber is today. However, there wouldn't be any drivers, just you, a self-driving car, and whatever destination you need. That means that many people could all share a network of cars, all coordinated from a central hub and controlled with a system similar to that of Uber or Lyft, or, as evidence points to, it could even be Uber or Lyft themselves, controlling a vast fleet of autonomous cars. Now this wouldn't be for everyone, and many people would probably still have their own cars. But the fact still remains that they can be stored anywhere, automatically, and summoned wherever and whenever you need them. We'll start to see self-driving cars with subscription plans and a la carte options, of course complete with upgrades so you can take your Accord to work but splurge on a Lamborghini for late night outings. Cars would also look very different than what you're used to today. Sure, many cars would stay the same to ease society into self-driving prospects. But would it be too far-fetched to see a car with an emphasis on internal entertainment and functionality, like this Mercedes concept for a luxury self-driving car? The cars would be more focused on an interior design more and more as time progresses, and would likely be tailored to the interests of the occupants themselves, be it a desk for the hard-working executive, mini camera for the movie fan, or even a car with a bed for those who need a little extra sleep, our cars would be much more customized to our own wants and desires in our self-driving future. But as always, only the future will tell. Hopefully you learned something new today, and you were able to get excited about what the future of tech may have in store for self-driving cars. This was our first episode, so please let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't worry, we're still doing mobile videos. We just wanted to give this type of video a try. And if you guys like it, we can keep the series going. Be sure to subscribe, like the video if you learned something new, share it with your friends, and leave a comment below with what you think the future has in store for self-driving cars for a chance to win a free gift card. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.